Hello everyone and welcome to It Takes Courage to Leave with me. You guys don't mind my hair, it's just natural, I'm doing a thing, so don't mind that. The rest of me looks alright. So, anyway, you are watching It Takes Courage to Leave with myself. Is My name is Tanika and this is Sister Tribe and what we are here to do, our mission and our goal is to tell our stories one woman at a time, one nation, one continent, friend, and village at a time to empower those to know that there is hope and empowerment and change for all the women across the globe. So I also want to say before I get started, because I forgot last time because that was a very heavy um, episode, Miss Kasika comes on tonight, 8 Central Standard Time, The Real Talk with Kasika and her beautiful husband, Prophet. So you guys tune in tonight and catch them. Beautiful, beautiful show, and they always bring the real. So today we are talking about, in episode six, we will be talking about self-care. And what does that bring up when you think about self-care? The first thing I think about is, I'm gonna need to go to the gym, I'm gonna need to get off this baby cute weight and get on a healthy diet, and, and that's it. That's that's all self-care is. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you. And all my replay viewers, thank you for being here as well. So if I miss some of you, please do not take that to me. I'm not being rude, but good morning to all of you. I know some of you might be sending comments. She's like, she's not paying attention to me. Trust me, I'm trying to look and remember what I got going on. So if I didn't say good morning to you, good morning. Um, so anyway, self-care. And most of us tend to think that self-care only means a nutritional diet, um, watching what you eat, and working out. And that is wonderful. That is something that we all need to do. I know myself, I need to do it. But there's something else before you go to the gym. Before, hello, Miss Charlene Coleman, how are you? Before you go to the gym, before you do any of that, even if you want to start eating healthy now, that's good. Get in your vegetables, your fruits, your milk, your organic milk, your organic fruits. Get it all. Get, you know, consume that. Start getting your body prepared. Um, but there is something that you have to know. If your mind, and we're going to talk about this guy up here because everybody wants to get rid of that part and say just go to the physical, just getting rid of the weight physically and just, you know, eating right. And that's good. We want to make sure we, we are watching what we're eating. You know, you don't want to go out to McDonald's and supersize your Big Mac. And then you want to go over to Dunkin' Donuts and go get a latte and some cream filled donuts. And they'll be like, Lord, I don't know why I can't lose this weight. Well, we know where the problem lies. So that's that's really not that's not the only thing you have to do. You do also have to be mindful about your mind. Your mind. If you are not ready mentally you will not be ready physically. Let me say that again. If you are not ready mentally, you will not be ready physically because your mind sets the stage for how your body will follow. Your mind has to be in gear first in order for your body to make that physical train change and transformation it needs to take. If your mind is somewhere else and you're going to the gym, you are not truly invested in changing your physical nature because your mind's not invested in it. Your mind's not there. I'm going to use me as an example because I always use me because you guys don't have this problem. I'm sure nobody on here has that problem. It's only Tanika. So with that being said, I'm going to use Tanika and I'm going to say, look, this is what I've done. I went ahead and I said, you know what? I'm going to change myself. I am going to go to the gym. So what did I do? Tanika ran down and she got a membership. Oh yeah, and I was working out, getting up four o'clock in the morning. I put my work in. Oh yes, I was getting it. I had a trainer and everything. I was like, this is great. This is great. I'm getting it in. Mm, oh yeah. Uh, but my mental state, it was not there. It was not there. And I was still, I was still in that toxic environment. My mental state wasn't there, but I wanted so bad to lose the weight. I said, I got to get this off. I don't want to look like this. I don't want to be like this. I said, I'm going to change. I'm going to go do it. Paid money, went, and I was going. All of a sudden, things in the domestic violence start getting heavy. 
And the man starts saying, well, why are you trying to go get healthy, blah, blah, blah. But it was you that wanted me to go to the gym and I'm going to the gym, not just for you, but to make myself feel healthy. And I was feeling good about it. I was going, come to find out, I stopped the gym membership. I stopped going. I stopped going, I stopped exercising and went back to square one. So I, I did it again. I said, you know what? I've had enough of that. I am going back to the gym. So I found a different gym and I'm going to go and pay some different money. I said, this time I'm going to do it. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm gun ho. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get this gym membership and I'm going to go do this because I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to take care of me. That's what I'm going to do. Don't you know, I, I didn't even touch that gym about maybe two or three times and was just kept steadily paying that membership, steadily paying that membership. But where was my body? It wasn't there using the membership. It was my money was paying for it, but I wasn't there. Okay, Tanika, well, why, why, why would you pay for something if you're not going to use it? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, you tell me you just wasted money? Yeah, I am. I am. Because my mind wasn't ready to do that. That My mind wasn't ready to do that. You know, when when you have to get invested, you know, not really typical, but... When you have to think about these things, when you're coming out, out of these different kinds of situations, you have to be mindful of your mind and having the same mindset. If you don't change your mindset, you cannot change yourself. It's not always typical to go into a domestic violence situation. It's not typical to get hit on. It's not typical to be hurt. It's not typical at all. These are not typical things. When you're healthy, you can do healthy things. When you're in an unhealthy relationship, you make unhealthy choices, you make poor choices, and sometimes you make poor judgments and poor decisions. So we have to fix our mind so that we can go and live our best self and have that self-care for us. And whatever self-care is for you, make sure your mind is in tune because you want to be committed. You want to commit yourself to being invested in the change you want to see. You want to be committed to that. Commit to the change, commit to the self-care, commit to what it is. Because ultimately, when you hear self-care, it's about yourself. So if you have to build your self-esteem up and you need to go somewhere for a minute, you need to go to a movie, you need to go take a walk, you need to have some time with the Lord, you need to read, you need whatever you need to do because it's self-care, then you need to figure out and discover yourself and and figure out what is it that I need to do for me? What do you like to do for you? You say, well, I don't know what I like. Well, you have to find that out. What is it that helps you distress? What is it that brings the stressors down for you? What is it that brings a smile to your face? What are the things that you do to take care of yourself? Because I tell you one thing, if you don't take care of yourself, nobody's gonna take care of you. So you have to be careful with yourself as you are caring for yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself saying, oh, you know what? That was so stupid. I should have never done that, blah, blah, blah. That's not helping you. That's tearing you down. And you want to be careful about tearing yourself down because you're doing the best you can with what you ha- you can while you're building yourself up. It's about building yourself up, restoring yourself from the last episode, doing those three R's. We want to redefine, we're reinventing and reviving and renewing. You're bringing yourself back. So this episode pairs with the other one. You know, it's it's that's it. Do not underestimate the power of tiredness. That's true too. And if your body is tired, if your body is tired or you're mentally tired, you can't force yourself to do something that, thank you, Mr. Carlos, for bringing that up. You can't force yourself to do something and comfort zone force. Yes, the comfort zone is boring. You can't force yourself to do something if you're not emotionally invested in it. If you are too tired and you've just been worn down, you have to take that into account. You have to do a self-check. Do a self-assessment. How am I feeling? Sometimes we don't even check it with ourselves. Do you check it with yourself? Sometimes you will check in with your mother, your brother, your sister, your cousin, your aunt, your friend. Like, hey, well, how how you doing, man? How you doing? Or girl, what's going on, girl? What's going on? But have you ever stopped to, to check in on you to say, you know what? How am I feeling today? And it's so easy for us when we go out there 
would you be tired of being good? I don't think so. I don't think I would be tired of being good. We all come through challenges, and I wouldn't be tired of being good. We all come through challenges that cause us to think differently, And but you can't be bitter about what's happened to you because that just hurts you more. You can't be mean because that just changes who you are. So it's all about getting to know yourself. We know we live in this world that there's not a not a lot of people are just out there being kind. Okay, that's we we live in this world where people are mean. There are mean people out there, but are you going to be mean right back? I mean, that's your choice to do. If you want to be mean right back, then that is your that's your cup of joe. For me, that's not my cup of joe. I don't I don't do that. If someone's going to be like, you know, cussing me out and and put their finger all in my face and this and that and and I'm supposed to go back and do the same. Well, blah, blah, blah. no, no, because you just you just perpetuate the situation. It just makes it worse. So then you end up feeling angry and upset. And I couldn't believe I let that person say that to me. And I should have, you know, we stop all of that because self care. What we're doing with self care is we're trying to prepare ourselves for all types of situations. That one being included from a stranger to your closest relative to. Uh, even a significant that you might have or you're intended to come to you, how are you going to deal with those challenges when that wife or that girlfriend or that boyfriend gets in your face and they have an attitude? Are you going to hurt them because they're really pissy right now because of something that's bothering them? I mean, we choose how we react. That's the point. Being good is good, but sometimes it's really boring. That's why I'm divorced now. I, I don't know. Perhaps... Perhaps, perhaps, and I'm not saying maybe it's not you. Maybe it was the significant. You know, being good is not necessarily boring. And I think you'd have to really put it in context to say what is boring. Is being good not going anywhere and staying at home 365 days a year? If, I don't think so because I'm good, but I'm not I'm not boring. This, this lady right here, I'm not boring. Um, you have to figure out. Well, I don't know. You might have to you might have to reevaluate yourself. You might have to do a self check. If you think you're boring, bring something exciting into your life. Do something you've never done. Go somewhere you've never gone. Your life doesn't have to be boring because you're a good person. You're automatically boring. I fail to see. You are a wonderfully fearfully created person, and I highly doubt. I highly doubt that. Money can be an issue. That's okay. But that doesn't make you boring. Money doesn't make a person boring. No, 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 no. You are a strong person. You are a fearfully, wonderfully made creature. All you have to do is figure out what makes me tick. Why? Why do I? And where's that thought coming from? Capture that thought and analyze, dissect that thought. Why is it I think a good person is boring? Think about that. What is it in you that makes you say that? You know, that's right. Money doesn't make a person. Exactly. What is it in, I'm telling you, our minds, what is it that my mind is telling me that says I'm a boring person because I'm good, I'm boring, because I want to treat a woman nice, I'm a sucker, because I'm a woman that has standards, I'm the B word. Now, we have to figure out, okay, this is self-care. When you do it self-care, it has to start with the mind. Your mentality needs to figure out exactly what you're telling yourself before you can commit to any change. That's my point. Before you can commit to any change, you can't change what somebody else does. You cannot change them. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can't change them. You can change how you react to them, but you can't change them. If they chose to leave, let them go. They weren't the one. Well, we can where you work on that. You can be strong. That's you take your time and get to know yourself. Get to know yourself. Because I would say the same thing. At one time, I was so timid. I was so timid. I would ask, I would even, I would even ask someone for a menu. Nothing good when you're all broke. Well, we are all going through challenges. And you know, broke is a temporary, a temporary status. You don't have to stay that way. It's a temporary status. I can be broke too, but if you look at it in a different perspective, just say, I'm just 
waiting on money to come to me because that's just temporary. Now, if you're poor and you're poor, that's it. How do you know? How do I know? Phrase me the question again and then ask me exactly what you're asking me. How do I know X? And, and I'll address you because I'll do that. Money doesn't define us. It, it's a means to it. Exactly. And I hate when people are always saying, money's evil. Money is evil. It's not the money that's evil. It's a tool. What you do with that money and your love of the money to utilize that tool, that's what makes it evil. If I have $5,000 and I take that $5,000 and I go and help homeless, that tool went for a good purpose. If I take that same $5,000, vital essence these days, true. If I take that same $5,000 and I go hire a hitman to go kill somebody, okay, money's evil. Was money evil or was it the intentionality behind what you were going to do with that tool? Because this is money. It, it can't do nothing. It don't think. It don't breathe. It don't live. It's, it's an inanimate object. So in order for it to be evil, it would have to have life. The only person that gives it life is the person who is holding it. So if <coughs> sometimes it does, yeah, it has a life of its own where it just jumps out your pocket into McDonald's or into the grocery store or into bills. It does have a life. It likes to walk that way. But once again, I'm saying our mind, our mind, we have to figure out what thoughts, where we are, self-check and assess where we are as far as are you ready to commit for the transformation you're trying to seek. Hi, Sister Kasika. I talked about your show. Sorry, I forgot it last. <laughs> I forgot it last episode. So where are you mentally? And you guys have to excuse me if I sound really congested. One of my kids gave me a cold. Yes, it's the mind. Your mind is your battlefield. Hey, Kasika, you cannot make a change or want any change or garner any kind of change without first focusing here. It starts in your mind. It starts with a thought. If you think it, you can be it. If you think it, you can be it. If you think you're boring, okay, your thought is going to produce an action and you're going to act very boring. That's just it. Your thoughts will do that. My thought says to me, I am a very lively person. I'm a very robust woman and I am a very animated person. I am what I believe is my thoughts. If your mind is telling you one thing, you're going to produce what you think. So like I'm saying, let's talk about the gym. If you're not committed, if your mind is not committed somewhere else, <coughs> you're not going to do anything. That's going to be a waste of your time. It's going to be a waste of you. So just think about that. Think about exactly what you're saying. And I don't know if Mr. Carlos is still here, but think about that. <clears throat> we don't have to go out and be the biggest, baddest person to go out and do be a bodybuilder or go and make the best ballads of sonnets or, you know, it's not about that. It's really about you. It's about you figuring out you. When we talk about self-care, it's all about you. Figure out yourself. If you think I can't do this, Figure out what it is you think you can't do and let's start with the first thing you can do and let's take the apostrophe T off of that and say, I can be something different. I will do something. Give yourself affirmations. If you do nothing else, make up affirmations about yourself. What is it that you're good at already that you can emphasize upon? If you think you're boring, okay, that's a thought you're probably going to need to change. But affirm yourself. Yes, Miss Kasika, affirm yourself. She's My sister's helping me out. Affirm yourself. Make those affirmations to yourself. It starts with a thought. If you start to give yourself positive things to eat, you will produce positive. If you put in negative, you'll produce negative. It's just a law of reciprocity. Reciprocity. You, what is it? You sow what you reap. You reap what you sow. If you will sow negative, you'll reap negative. If you sow positive, you'll produce positive. It's not any different than from the law of attraction. If you're negative, you'll attract negative people. If you're positive, you'll attract positive people. Self-care about you is about your mind. And as you start to fix your mind, 
the things that you are talking about will come to you. But if you're not going to fix your mind, you are going to deflect what you want. So if you want a good person to come into your life, speak good into yourself, speak good. But if you're talking about yourself and you are doubting yourself, that's right. It's a lot of will work for you. Work it. If you start speaking things that are bad, I'm this and I'm that. And I wish I could, but I can't, I can't, I can't. I would have, could have, should have. All those negative things will produce all kinds of a negative storm upon you and you will prophesy, you will dictate to your life that all of your life totally is wrong and all the negative stuff is just going to come to you. You're going to go driving a busted tire. You Lord, why a busted tire? You're going to go get your tire fixed. They charge you too much and rip you off. All these different things are coming because it starts with a thought. Your thought attracts different things. Attract positive, put out positive into the world, put out positive into the universe, put out positive out your mouth. So a man think of these, she'll speak. Speak life, speak power. Don't speak negative or ill of yourself. What are you doing? What are we doing? Why, why, why? It took me, it took me so long to figure out what I was doing. I was, I was cursing myself. It didn't have to do with nobody else. I was cursing myself. Did you know you could curse yourself? And I'm not talking about witchcraft. I'm just saying you're just wishing upon yourself bad things. You know what? I wish I could be a better writer, but you don't write nothing, so you just stop writing. You can do what it is you want to do. It's so true that when everybody says the sky is the limit of what kind of job you want to do, where you want to go, if you want to sing, if you want to rap, whatever it is, it starts with your thoughts in your mind. So if you believe something in your mind so strongly, you will produce that. Exactly, Ms. Kasika. Life and death is in the power of our tongue. You must be careful what you say. Sometimes we go around with these blanket statements, and I've done it too, and I've been trying to change it. Someone will ask you, it's simple, <clears throat> how was your day? How was your day today? You say, oh, fine. No, and doggone well, you're not fine because you have had the worst day. So for me, sometimes I'll use the weather. So it says, how are you doing? I said, you know, I'm feeling partly cloudy with a chance of rain. Oh, it's that bad. I hope it gets better. Somebody has just acknowledged that you are not feeling so well. You're not feeling so hot, but without telling them all your business, well, you know, my husband just did it and cheated on me and I can't believe he got a baby on the way and child support. Like you don't have to tell them all of that. You don't have to do all of that. You could do it differently. Do a story. And I love to story tell. A storytelling is what I'm doing now. We're all telling our stories. So tell another story in your story. Make a story. You know, whatever you want to do to get your point across, you know, I'm always telling somebody I feel okay and then I'm fine, but you know, this is really how it's going on. Well, we need to start with our thoughts and changing how we address how we were feeling. When someone says, how are you doing today? If, today, if you are feeling good, then say, I feel good. But if you're not feeling good, you're lying to yourself and you're lying to that person. And they just ask you a simple question. That's right. Tell a new story. Change your story. What is the story you want it to be? You know, and at the same time, if you aren't feeling so hot, find a way to find a bright spot in every dark cloud. I would always say this. And somebody told me this to say, with every dark cloud, there is a silver lining. There is a silver lining. There is always a silver lining to a dark cloud. And the darker the cloud, the brighter and stronger that silver lining. Okay? So prepare yourself. If you're going through a difficult situation, say you're separated from your ex. Say someone just hit you or whatever the case may be. You got robbed. There is a silver lining to that big mess. But it's our job to see what that is. Because for me, I'll use an example, military. I wanted to go in there for so long. I'll make this a quick story because I'm coming on, on close to time. So I got to watch my time. I wanted to go in the military so bad that when I got in, I was so happy. 
But things started happening and I had to be released as it were. I was so upset that I was like, that was my dark cloud. I was like, are you serious right now? I worked. I, I took the oath, you know, to stand against foreign and domestic. I was like, this is it. I'm about to be a military. I'm about to be an officer. This is whoop de whoop de whoop. I can't wait. I was out. They had got me out. But in that, after I had to take my time and figure out, Lord, why would you take me out of the military? I worked so hard. But there was so much evil going over in the Gulf War era, we were still going on with it, that a lot of people were coming back in body bags. A lot of people were getting attacked with Agent Orange and all these different things that I I was not privy to. And I was going to be in supply where you go over with the military and you give them their supplies. So obviously I would have to go over there and give them what they need. So I could too come back and not be living right now to speak to you because I was in the Gulf War era when I joined. So it was the military, military combat era. <clears throat> so the silver lining to that story, like Tunica, you got kicked out or they, they, they released you. They let you go. You want to do that so bad. Right. But at the same token, the military realized what they did and they're paying for me for the rest of my life, even to the grave, that they will take care of me till I die. And my kids are covered under them until they're 23 or they don't want to go to college the silver lining to the dark storm that I wanted to focus on. Self-care. It's all about our mind. Thinking about everything different. Telling a story. Figuring out how you're going to change your story. Finding the silver lining in what's going on. Self-care is a lot of mental. Get committed to your mental. Then you can move your physical right along. Get committed to your mental. You can move your physical. Start speaking power start speaking life, start speaking good, start taking care of yourself, start thinking about yourself, being careful with yourself, being tender with yourself. Don't always be so quick to be so overly critical about yourself. Well, you know, you're such a stupid person. You should have done this better. Stop it. Just stop. We're all human. You're human too. Don't exactly love yourself. The self-care, love yourself. It's about you taking care of yourself. Self-care, care for you. Care for you, care about you. So treat you good because you are all you got. So when you wake up in the, in the morning and look in the mirror, don't be mean, say good morning. How are you doing today? Look at yourself and, and smile. It's gonna be a great day, isn't it? You and I, we're gonna go out there. It's me, myself and I, all three of us gonna have a great day as one person. So speak well of yourself, have intentionality to do good to yourself, speak good, think Great thoughts. Think great thoughts. Don't ever say anything negative about yourself because you're worth more than that. You're worth more than that. So I just want to tell you guys very quickly before I get off here, that's my time. And I got a couple minutes. So please catch Miss Kasika. Um, she's put up all the hearts. Thank you, dear. Uh, please catch her tonight on The Real Talk. Her. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. With her beautiful very Holy Spirit filled husband, prophet. Please catch him. Real talk, 8 Central Standard Time. Miss Kasika, you don't want to miss out on anything that's going on with Sister Tribe. So come back and catch me on Monday. And you can also find all of the Sister Tribe broadcasters on YouTube as well. So I hope to see you guys later. You guys be blessed. Speak well. Have intentionality. And speak power. You guys be blessed and take care. Bye, y'all.